Hi, my name is David Firth and I'm a professor in the College of Business of the University of Montana and I'm here today to talk to you about the future of work. And although it's called the future of work, really it's the future of everything. It's the future of society, it's the future of schools, it's the future of universities, it's the future of government, but it's called the future of work. And I think it's going to be a really interesting topic for us to discuss. Now my guess is almost none of you have any clue what management information systems is. My guess is you're pretty familiar with what physics is and what English is and what history is because you cover those in high school. And it might be that you know what marketing is because you've seen it and experienced it. It might be that you know what finance is. It's about banking and getting money. But my guess is none of you know what management information systems is. And yet what I found interesting is that we all have plenty of management information systems. Indeed, you probably have one in your pocket right now. Your smartphone is an information system. All an information system is, is a piece of technology that helps you get something done. And it turns out that technology that helps you get things done, that's a very, very valuable, important, useful thing to know a lot about. And so we're going to talk about that here today. Before we get going though, let's talk about some of the companies that you've heard of that are actually information systems companies. So Facebook, that's a social networking company. Um, and Facebook is an information systems. It connects people with other people and it also delivers advertising to those people. So it's an information system, one of the most valuable companies in the world. The most valuable company, certainly in America, is Microsoft. And that allows things like Zoom it allows things like um, Moodle to work. The learning management system that you use at school almost certainly runs on Microsoft information systems. Netflix, that's the obviously the ability to get uh, movies and video content uh, streaming online. That's an information system. And yet things like Domino's Pizza, they're also an information system. In fact, Domino's Pizza, they have more people in their information systems department than they do helping make pizzas. And why is that? Because Domino's Pizza, really all it is, is about uh, the ability to order a pizza online, make your choices, what toppings you're gonna have, you know, whether you're gonna add wings and Coke to that. Um, and then you get to uh, you know, press pay and then you get to track the pizza through the process. All of that is done by an information system. The pizza itself is very easy. Remember, you can make pizza at home. It's just flour, water, a bit of dough and some topping and some you know, pepperoni and, and mushrooms on top. Um, so at the end of the day, the pizza is the easy part. The difficult, interesting, useful part is the information system that allows you to order, allows you to make your selections, and then allows you to pay and track the whole thing through the process and maybe get a text when things are done. So that's what information systems are. And another way to look at management information systems is that we're a translator. We, we translate between technology and we translate between technology and business. And so we sit in a very valuable intersection and that plays out in how much uh, money, the starting salary of the MIS majors, management information systems majors, they make uh, on average $60,000 a year when they graduate from the University of Montana. The next highest major to graduate with is forestry, and that's all the way down at 38,000. So it's, it's such a valuable space to be. And what I find interesting about being a translator is you sit at a very interesting intersection between business and technology, and that's what the future of work is all about. And so the future of work uh, can be summed up a little bit by this. And frequently what you hear when you hear about something called the future of work, how things are going to change in the future because of technology, is that machines, robots, are going to replace everything. Now it turns out that's just not true. And indeed what we look at in our course here at the University of Montana is we look at how they're going to be, um, people are going to lose their jobs. There are definitely jobs that are going to go away because of robots and artificial intelligence but there are gonna be new jobs created as well. 
And so what we need to understand is what goes away and what gets created. And that's just a much more interesting way to look at the world. So let me take you inside. This is the Moodle shell, the learning management system, information system that we use, I use at the University of Montana to teach my sophomores. And you'll see here that I have an Innovate High School section. And, an, and you'll also see that there was a section on the future work. This is something I teach to my college uh, students. Uh, but I want to teach a little bit to you now. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to watch just a few short videos and for each video, I want you to, one, enjoy it, and then two, while you're watching it, think about what does this piece of technology, whose job does it replace, who loses a job, and then also who gets to have a new job, what are the new jobs that are created. So what we have next is a, a video from Boston Dynamics. They're one of the most interesting robot makers, uh, obviously based in the United States. and. Take a look at this video and again, think about what sort of, these robots, whose job can they replace? And then what sort of new jobs do we get because of robots just like this? Take a moment, pause the video if you can, and maybe write down or at least think who who gets which jobs can could be possibly replaced by these robots, and what are the new jobs that get created because we have these robots. And hopefully what you've come up with is there's a lot of jobs that could potentially be replaced by robots just like these. Uh, I mean, for one, you know, it could replace um, any sort of cleaning that needs to get done. We saw that robot that was actually loading a dishwasher. Imagine we had a care home or a, or a restaurant or a um, university you know, dorms or you've got the university dining center, um, you've got healthcare, you know, where there's meals being served to patients. Imagine we had robots cleaning up after all that. Um, and then of course, we've got those, you know, the big robot that does the jump. Um, so you could send robots like that into dangerous situations. So they could be military robots, uh, but they could also be rescue robots. You know, if you've got earthquakes going on or you've got hostage situations, um, if you've got anything that just has an element of danger where a human life could be a danger, you might want to send robots like that in to help. And so that's where, that's all the people who might get to lose a job, but much more interesting is all the people who get all the new jobs that get created here. So some of the new jobs, of course, is, well, you have to have people who, you know, develop these robots. And there's gonna be engineers, there's gonna be information systems people, um, there's gonna be people who need to test these, um, there's gonna be need to be, there's gonna be need to be robot mechanics. Um, 
then we're going to need to have new people, uh, technical salespeople, who need to be able to sell these robots to different companies. Um, we need to get them delivered as well. So there's all sorts of new jobs that come as a result of putting robots, uh, having re robots replace humans. One of the things that's really important to us at the College of Business at the University of Montana in the Management Information Systems Department is making sure that um, what we do and all the opportunities that come with it, what we do are open to everyone. And so we've really worked hard to make sure that we have um, plenty of opportunities for women in technology, women in information systems. And indeed, we have uh, two, almost three times as many women in our program than uh, is common nationally. And we've really worked hard on making sure that we have women in information systems. So what I'm gonna close out with here is a video of one of our graduates, Taylor McDermott. She lives here in town. She just bought a house. Um, she's 23, 24, only two, three years out of college. Uh, doing amazingly well in the information systems field. So let's take a look at her video. Dear Missoula, you have grown me so much. If I hadn't moved here, I have no idea who I would be or what I would be doing. I would say just keep doing what you're doing and thank you. My name is Taylor McDermott. I work as a strategy and corporate development consultant at ATG here in Missoula. I grew up in Forsyth, Montana, which is in southeastern Montana, about 100 miles east of Billings. Yeah, it was just really small. It's definitely like an agriculture town, really rural, really conservative area of Montana. You pretty much know everyone and everyone knows you. And my dad was a cop, so everyone definitely knew me. My parents didn't attend college, but they told me from the time I was a little kid that I was going to school. And so when I was in high school, I started looking for scholarships like a year before I graduated because I didn't want to have to worry about paying for school. I applied to four schools and then I obviously picked UM because I had visited the campus when I was a kid. And my dad said then that he saw the look on my face when I was like walking around campus and he just said that he knew that I was coming here. <laughs> When I came to Missoula, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I was just sort of switching majors, trying to figure it out. Hey, hello there. And then I met Dr. Firth, and he said basically, well, do you want to do something really cool and be secure, like, and make real money? And I said, yeah. I changed my major to management information systems. He's one of my biggest mentors and like the reason I ended up in MIS. Sometimes we like to call people who know management information systems bilingual so they can speak business and they can speak technology. And so our information systems majors can talk to programmers and they can talk to business people about what programmers need to get done. And so they sit in a really valuable intersection between business and technology. Being in the business school, the advantage here is that there is a huge career development program and they work really hard to put employment opportunities in front of students. I did an internship with KPMG in San Diego and I loved living there and I did get a full-time offer to work there after I graduated, but I did turn that down because Missoula is amazing, so I didn't want to leave. I knew how happy I was here. You could just about do anything in Missoula. If you love art, or you have tons of inspiration. If you like the outdoors, you can do that. If you like to work in tech, you can do that. It kind of circles back to David Firth again. He had been telling me for a while that I should look at ATG. ATG was founded in 2001 in Overland Park, Kansas, and had offices in St. Louis and Kansas City when we opened the office here. It wouldn't have happened if the University of Montana hadn't been there right in my backyard. I got introduced to Dr. David Firth. What I told Tom was, if you have a consulting firm here that does technology consulting, a lot of my students who leave the state, like Taylor McDermott, they want to stay. They want to do great work here in Missoula. I love my job. It's awesome. I'm super supported. I'm really challenged all the time. I feel like it matters because ATG brings a ton of jobs to Missoula, so that's one of my huge motivating factors for working there is because it employs so many people and it employs them well so people can live 
happy and secure. I don't think that the University of Montana would be the same if it was in a different city. And I don't think that Missoula would be as successful, have the industry that it does now if it didn't have the university here. I just can't imagine like being happier at this age and having the opportunity that I do if I hadn't taken this path. Thank you for listening to me today. Again, I'm David Firth, Professor of Management Information Systems in the College of Business at the University of Montana. If you've got any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, happy to reach out to you, happy to chat to you. Uh, it's a fabulously interesting uh, time. It's, uh, everything that's happened has only meant technology is more important. We're doing this. You know, we're doing this recorded, we're delivering it over at Information Systems. Information Systems have only become more important and they keep getting more important. Uh, and I'd be very happy to speak with you more about it. Just reach out, send me an email, and I'll be happy to chat. Thank you.